the Simeon Mountains, an Afro-Alpine landscape of lush grasslands, steep gorges, plunging waterfalls, and spectacular rocky peaks. Home to rare species seeking refuge at more than 10,000 feet. Welcome to Northern Ethiopia. Welcome to Inside Africa. We're on a journey to the beautiful Simeon Mountains National Park in Northern Ethiopia. From the city of Gondar, we drive nearly 150 kilometers northeast towards the jagged peaks formed by 40 million years of erosion and seismic activity. This park was established in 1969 to protect the rare species of animals found only in Ethiopia. We're on a mission to see some of that wildlife, led by the park's chief warden, Maru Biedgelen. This is a group of Galada baboons. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, Galada groups here. So uh, one group have uh, a range of up to 800 individuals. Uh, in 800 individuals, we call them harem. Uh, these harems are uh, having groups. There are bachelor groups there. The bachelor groups are the young groups coming out of the group. So it's ranged uh, five up to seven. Uh, these galadas are uh, endemic to this uh, country. So uh, we are protecting uh, this uh, animal. We have a census conducted in this year having uh, gates more than 26,000 around the national park. That one looks like a lion to me. It has a mane, it's very big. Yeah. Do they all grow up to look like that, the males? Yeah, yeah. The mane is there. Uh, the, uh, that's why the gladder bones, sometimes we call it lion monkey. This is because they have big lion. It's a big man. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is some problem here. Yeah. <laughs> what are they yeah, calling yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There is one group. You see that group? That one. Yeah, yeah. They try to dominate this group. That's why <laughs> they are fighting. So the male here is too old yeah, to run yeah, the yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're trying to <laughs> yeah. kick him out. Yeah. There can only be one male leader in a harem. And this is how the bachelors fight for dominance. They have managed to chase that one away. Yeah. It seems to be disappearing from the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will it go and form its own family? Yeah, also? yeah, yeah. He's interested to make a physical family. So some females will follow yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is no female now. But There's he's interested to get a female. Yeah. That's why he's around. So he has to fight yeah, and look fight, like a yeah, champ yeah, and then one yeah, woman yeah. will say, okay, I'll come he with you. He challenges to the uh, one group and then if he has a power, he can fight away. Uh, otherwise, it's a problem. That but is takes, fascinating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes these baboons are called the bleeding heart monkey because of the hairless red patch of skin on their chest. So where are they going now? Now they are going to the uh, to feed. This this area is not uh, palatable food here, so they move to towards the eastern part. This is mostly the socialization area because the caves are be below these uh, cliffs. So they live beneath this cliff somewhere. Yes, beneath is this here. They, they live here. This is uh, their uh, good area or habitat because it's free of enemies. Because and the view is incredible. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they have such a beautiful yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. As we continue our wildlife journey, we are able to see some of the beautiful landscape of the Simeon Mountains. It's rainy season, which means lots of clouds, but also beautiful waterfalls. We are now searching for the endangered Walia ibex. That is the Walia ibex, endemic to the Simeon Mountain National Park. This uh, 
uh, Walia Ibex is uh, found only in this area. Why is that? Is there a reason, do you think? Yeah, they are, uh, their adaptability is highland because the animals are adapted to the highlands. So they get their uh, favorable food here. And what do they eat? They feed uh, different types of uh, food. Uh, one is a giant lobelia. You hear is the giant lobelia, especially the dry one. They f like it, the dry one. The other is the helichrysum. This is a plant. We call it the everlasting flower. In Amharic, uh, we call it Yawale Aisho. So what's the population of the ibex in, in this park? We conduct a census in the last year, so we can find, we found more than 900 uh, individuals. Uh, before 20 years, uh, it is uh, somewhat uh, it is difficult to find Oale Ibex. The number is reaches to 150 only. Now there is a protection of uh, there is expansion of the area and their habitat, so the number is now from year to year this is increasing. So. They are a bit shy, but we're going to try and get a bit closer to them. If we lose them, at least we have the chance to see them. So this is as close as we can get. And for me, honestly, it's very, very close. I can see the details of this lovely creature, the patches on the leg, the little black on the chest. It's quite brave because it's watching us. But if we get any closer, it will probably run. It's coming towards us. can tell we are friendly. No, this is the road to go. Ah. Yeah. You see? You see? Climbing the rock. You see? She's approaching. <laughs> Come on. You like me. thought we were going to get a closer look, but they soon disappear over the ridge. Oh. <laughs> She's run. Yeah. That was too close. So we've seen the Galada, we've now seen the Wally of Abex, but obviously the most difficult one to find and spot is the wolf. Yeah. yeah. Do you think we stand a chance of finding them around here? Yeah, yeah, okay. maybe. Because uh, the Ethiopian wolf is active at the, in, at the night time. This is nocturnal, you see? Yeah. This is a, a night animal. But we can, we may find, there is a probability of find Ethiopian wolf. During so the day? we may try to find here. Okay. okay. And we are off to try and find some wolves.